Good evening, everyone. Before we begin, I would like to let you know that this presentation will be translated in Spanish. Buenas tardes. Antes de iniciar, quiero dejarles saber que esta presentación se está interpretando en español. Para el español, por favor, o, eh, busque el icono del globo que se encuentra en la pantalla de abajo, que se encuentra en la parte de abajo de la pantalla y escoja español. Gracias. Thank you, Dr. Satterwhite. Thank you, Carla. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the third annual Black History Month celebration, Resilience Personified, celebrating Black excellence, fortitude, and culture. I am Dr. Latrice Satterwhite. I am the Director of Specialized Student Services. As a member of this hardworking, dedicated Black History Month Committee of inspiring U46 educators, I bring you greetings. We are here this evening to celebrate the achievements of our African-American scholars. We are so proud of what these young people have accomplished and look forward to more great success in the near future. We are so excited that our proud parents, tonight's recipients, educators, our superintendent, our deputy superintendent, our community members have all joined here this evening to recognize our students. Be prepared for an inspiring evening. We will now listen to Dr. Risa Jones sing, Lift Every Voice and Sing the Black National Anthem. Good evening, everyone. I am Charlotte Coleman, principal of Kimball Middle School. It is a pleasure to have you join us tonight.
Good evening. I am April Wells, Gifted Coordinator in School District U46. We are grateful to have our own Elgin and U46 opera singer, Teresa Jones, accompanied by Dr. Brady. That song symbolizes our resilience and our collective resolve. May we commit to a commitment to live out those lyrics on a daily basis. We know that leadership is not just a position or a title, but it's a disposition and a posture to achieve noteworthy outcomes for all we have the privilege and the opportunity to serve and to lead. So with that, it's befitting that I will introduce to you our leaders in School District 246, Tony Sanders, our school superintendent, and Dr. Suzanne Johnson will be followed by him, our deputy superintendent. Thank you. Thank you, April. It's such an honor to be with you all tonight. Uh, thank you to you, to the committee. Uh, also, thanks, Risa, for that beautiful, beautiful song. It's so great to see over 150 participants with us this evening. Uh, we wish we could be together in person, and we are so grateful for the committee that organized this event to make sure that we are still able to celebrate Black history as well as our Black student scholars this month. Dr. Johnson and I, and I'm sure members of the committee that organized the event can tell you that we strive to talk about Black history and its ideals every month in U46, not just in February. In fact, we're talking about equity and inclusion on a daily basis in U46. It's not just a plan that our board approves that sits on our website. We understand the depth of our responsibility to this work daily, and we're discussing how we achieve the goals that are outlined in our equity plan every day and work towards those goals is increasingly embed embedded into every conversation that we have. We ask how comfortable our students are when talking about race and culture in our classrooms. How often and how well do we as educators lead those discussions? Are our students represented in teaching materials and lesson plans? Do our students feel like they belong? Do they see teachers and principals who look like them? And how can we recruit more faculty to U46? We talk about climate and culture a lot, and I'm going to use this time to briefly encourage you to give us your feedback as parents and as students. We need parents to complete our five essential survey. It's available online at www.u-46.org slash five essentials. It's open now and it asks important questions that help our schools identify areas where they need to improve as well as areas where they're excelling. But more importantly, it tells us how we can better serve our students and our families. Your voice in the survey is used by our schools as they plan their learning journey for your students moving forward. And for our students, uh, we're also going to be asking you to complete uh, the five essential survey this year as you have done so in the past. It's open for you uh, on March 8th, uh, fourth through 12th graders will all be asked to complete it uh, during their school day. Like the lyrics Risa sang, the song that we all love, this is a way to make sure that your voice is is not only singing, but it's also being heard. The survey really does dive uh, deeper into, oh, we also have another survey coming out. That's our equity and inclusion survey that uh, you're also going to be asked to be taking as students. Uh, this survey takes gets us even more in depth than the five essentials. It dives into questions about belonging, diversity, equity, and inclusion. It tells us uh, on, on how you're feeling on nights, not only tonight, but how, how does it feel to sit in our classrooms every day? So please encourage your students to participate in our panorama survey when it comes out. With that, it's an honor to be with you again tonight. Uh, I look forward to being back in person with you next year. And now I will turn it over to our Deputy Superintendent for Instruction, Dr. Johnson. Thank you very much for this honor this evening. I am really pleased to be able to be here, uh, at least via Zoom, and share in this recognition tonight. As a proud U46 graduate, I know that we are making strides towards greater equity and inclusion. We are working to increase the diversity of our students who are in our gifted classrooms. We are changing our practices and protocols to make our high school magnet academies more accessible to all of our students. And we are leading discussions with students and parent groups around diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're providing more professional development around implicit bias, culturally responsive teaching strategies. And we've recently formed affinity groups 
for our colleagues so that we can gather um, with colleagues and work to explore our allyship and efforts to promote and move forward with our equity and our inclusion. And we are writing a curriculum for a future high school course for black history. But at the same time, we have a long way to go in U46. We need more diverse educators. Specifically, we need more African-American educators. And we need to ensure that all of our educators complete professional development in cultural, culturally responsive teaching and strategies to support all of our students. We need to close achievement gaps and opportunity gaps to ensure that our students and our diverse student demographic groups are not overly identified as students with special needs or in our discipline data. And we must ensure that our African-American students, our Latinx students are not only graduating, but are included among our top graduates. And we must continue to develop our parent leaders across our volunteer groups, our advisory groups, our governing groups, and our boards who reflect the diversity of our student body and our community. So tonight, while this is a tremendous celebration and an opportunity to recognize student achievement, our scholars, and the legacy and contributions of African Americans, we want you to know that we are committed to continuing the work to make nights like tonight even more meaningful. And we are so grateful to all of you here tonight and who have been part of our journey in U46, not only encouraging us, but requiring us to do better, to do better for our students and our families and for partnering with us to put equity and inclusion first. So with that, I want to welcome everyone again and thank you for your continued collaboration in our work to make equity and inclusion first in U46. Thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent Sanders and Deputy Suzanne Johnson. Greetings to all. My name is Teresa Winters, the proud principal of Hillcrest Elementary. Thank you for joining us this evening to celebrate, commend, and congratulate our Black Students Excellence in U46. I'm honored to introduce Velma Sept, community member and one of the facilitator of the African-American Advisory Council. And alongside, we have an extraordinary, excellent student, Ms. Ariana Sowers, participant of Larkin High School Club. Hi, my name is Velma Sept and I am the co-chair of the African-American Advisory Council we are here, to, the council is here to assist our African-American parents. And I'll give you an email where you can contact us with any questions or comments. The email address is aaparentinfo at gmail.com. Again, that's aaparentinfo at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Ariana Sowers. I'm the president of the Black History Club at Larkin High School. What our club represents is we want you to feel comfortable to join and not feel scared or unwanted. We try to make sure everybody feels comfortable and we want you to feel like you're a part of the group. We also want you to learn and educate you about Black history. Some of the things that we do in our club, we talk about the parallel between our movement and other movements that's happened in um, history. We talk about we talk about certain people that have 
have impacted the African American community, such as George Floyd, Breonna, and Breonna Taylor, amongst other names. We also talk about and play online games like Cahoots, me and the vice president of the group, we try and make sure it's fun and creative, but you're also learning. I'm sorry. I am a member of District U46 Black History Month Planning Committee. At this time, we will recognize our humanitarian award recipients. I am elated to present this special award that honors students who are leading the way for change and advocating for social justice issues that are important to them. Last November, a group of nine students represented a District U46 student leadership forum called Breaking Barriers in Education. This forum spoke about their experiences with racism and the importance of having an inclusive African-American curriculum. These were just some of the issues that were discussed. I was blown away by their eloquence and power of their voices, but most of all, I was deeply moved by their courage. So tonight, please take a moment, join me in honoring these bold and courageous students with this year's first humanitarian award. Good evening, everyone. My name is Janelle Lawrence Tabb, and I am the assistant principal at Harriet Gifford Elementary School. Tonight, we would also like to recognize our sixth and eighth grade scholars. Although in elementary school, we do not calculate a cumulative grade point average, these sixth grade students have made significant academic progress from spring 2020 through fall 2020. And continuing with this resilience personified, we are also honoring the academic achievements of our eighth grade students that have earned at least a 3.0 grade point average up to a 4.0 GPA from spring 2020 through fall 2020. The eighth grade honorees will also be receiving a certificate of recognition to mark this grand achievement. We are so very proud of their efforts and the focus of our sixth and eighth grade scholars. And we look forward to supporting them through their high school experiences. Thank you. And let's take a brief look at the screen to recognize these achievements and these students. Good evening, everyone. Once again, I am Charlotte Coleman, principal of Kimball Middle School, and here to introduce our speaker for tonight. Brittany Barber is an educator, speaker, blogger, and creator of tools and events that help people grow and persist. With more than 10 years of experience in higher education and over five years as a public speaker, Brittany uses re relational storytelling to disrupt beliefs about personal limitations and ignite people to pursue every ounce of incredible in this world. When Mrs. B, as she's known, hits the stage, audiences of all ages are stirred into action as they are reminded of how bold, how capable, and how brilliant they are. Brittany Barber holds a bachelor's degree in communication, a master's degree in nonprofit management and leadership, and is pursuing a doctorate in higher education administration and leadership. 
She is married to her best friend, Mr. Rodney Barber, mother of a little giant, Nina, and a proud servant of Jesus Christ. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Miss Brittany Barber. Thank you so much for that introduction. Hello. Hello, everybody. I hope that you have been clapping in your homes because I have been applauding already and getting really teary eyed looking at all of you. I know that some of you are probably really used to being awesome, right? You're used to excellence and being great. But something that I want us to remember, especially in a moment like this, don't ever get familiar with somebody's brilliance. So students, whoever you're watching this with, I want you to turn to them and tell them, don't get familiar with me, right? Just, just don't get familiar with me. I know I'm shining right now. I know that you liked me. I know that you grew up with me, but don't get familiar with me because I'm just getting started. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. As she said, my name is Miss B. I am a public speaker and an educator, and I am also your keynote speaker for tonight. A huge thank you to the amazing committee that arranged this event tonight. Thank you to the administrators, to the staff, to the community members, the activists, parents, guardians, kin, and to our esteemed scholars. It is an honor to be here before you tonight. And I do not take this lightly. I love students so much. I was looking forward to this night for forever. Literally, Michelle Obama could call me right now and be like, girl, I need you to come pick me up at the airport. And I would say, yes. But give me like 30 minutes to finish this keynote real quick. <laughs> because even my forever first lady, could not make me miss a night like tonight. This time to stand before you in all of your brilliance and all of your flyness and in all of your wealth. Now I know some of you are thinking, uh, Ms. B, can, you, you don't know my, my wallet, it's, it's, a little, it's a little light, right? But you still wealthy. The cultural capital that students possess is, is unparalleled. Let me give you an example. Who, who else can master the shifting of language like students can? I was talking to a student of mine one day and I was saying something about something. I don't even know what, because I'm always running my mouth. And I'm talking to him and I said, some, some, something, no lie. And he went, ugh, Miss B. We don't say that no more, it's, it's no cap. And I'm like, well, where was the memo? Who, what happened to, I thought no lie was decent, right? but he, he is a commander of the shifting of language. I was late, he was not. Who else but students can know when the app came out and, and memorize how it worked by the very next day and then have the nerve to look at you like you late. Students, y'all are some wealthy, wealthy people and I wouldn't have missed this for the world. Students have started and led entire campus movements, locking down entire administrative offices to make sure that Black and ethnic studies was a thing. It's students that are leading the charge. So it's students that I will forever rock with. You're the wealthiest people that I know, and I know a lot, right? So from the knucklehead to the future neurologist, I know a lot of students, and I love and I admire all of them. There is something powerful about someone in a position to learn, which is to say they're in a posture to grow. But how much does your value increase when you actually know that? To not just be present for your educational process, but to really claim it as you have. To go hard, no cap, like you do every single day. We are gathered here tonight in awe and expectation of you because you are a walking oil well. Now, what is an oil well, all right? An oil well by definition is a well or a shaft that is drilled through rock from which petroleum is drawn, petroleum being oil. It's basically a crane, usually with not much else around it that they use to draw up oil from the ground. We don't really hear too much about the oil wells, do we, right? We, we normally hear all about the oil, 
oil. It was it discovered and set our whole economic system into a flux in 1859. We need it to construct buildings. It keeps the engines running. Oil can start wars. It can ruin oceans. We need oil to create plastic. We use oil to get rich. Oil is used to gain power and influence. And when the supply is low, economic systems completely shift. Without oil, the Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz never would have moved and the whole story would have been ruined. We need oil, we get it, oil is great. But what about the oil well doing honor all of its own? Now we know at this point an oil well is a crane that drills deep into the ground, but in principle, an oil well is something that functions in a way no ordinary person could to provide what everyday people need. Without the well, there would be no oil, which is to say that when a well doesn't function, it's really hard for the rest of us to. Students, you are walking oil wells. Can I tell you about yourself just a little bit? I'm, I'm just gonna get in the bag just a little bit and tell you what, what I'm fully confident is true about all of you. Oil wells are the ones who know how to dig deep and get things done. They're the ones that when situated in a hard place, they still produce. Oil wells spot opportunity where others just see barren land. Oil wells, they just keep digging. They just keep going. They don't know how to stop until they get what they came for. They're excellent and their drive keeps pressing them forward. It's built into the very framework of how they've been created. Now, oil wells as machines are able to retrieve solutions, but oil wells as people are the solution. You were created to be a problem solver. It's just in you. When you were in your mother's womb and every time that you would kick, whether she liked it or not, all right? Maybe she did, maybe she did it. But every time you would kick, that was your way of saying, I have an answer. I am an answer and I need to get out and I need to move quick. You are the solution to the problem that we have in this world. You're the answer to a specific need, whether you make sense to your peers and teachers and cousins or not. Some days the aspiration you have might have an unfathomable how, or a humble audience of one who believes you, but your pursuit and your success is not obligated to oblige our sense-making. As if your righteous mind could ever make sense. As if our survival as a people could ever make sense. As if the world being blessed with the walking wonder that you are could ever make sense. As you go, and you will go on to do things that your children's children will remember, there will be those who cannot make sense of you. Maybe that's happening even now. People looking at you every day, like, how do you do that? How do you balance it all? How do you maintain? How do you, like, you don't make sense to people right now. They will see your excellence and maybe attribute it to an anomaly of our Black culture. They'll think you're a one-off. Others will see your excellence and buy for the price without understanding the cost. My dear Orwells, are you listening to me? The price of a thing and the cost of a thing are not the same. Price reflects value and an agreed upon return. So for example, I pay the attendant $5 and I get my Takis and my Arnold Palmer drink back in return. That's price. I pay the school $40,000 and I believe that that is what this degree is worth. And so I believe that I will get that degree in return because I paid the price that I'm seeing, right? Now price, Price is what we see up front and what we're willing to do. You get what I'm saying? So that's the upfront that I can understand that I'm willing to do. It's the, it's the relationship between what I see and what I get in return. That's price. But cost, where price speaks to what I'm getting in return, cost speaks to what had to be lost. 
If you look up the etymological origin of cost, you'll see that it means required expenditure of time or labor at the expense of pain, loss, hardship. Cost is what is incurred in the making of a thing. Everybody can't understand the cost that was paid for the moment like this and for all of the great moments that will follow. Everybody isn't willing to pay that. They might want that hashtag black excellence for the moment like this, but the public stage is reserved for the one who paid the private cost. And that was you. You paid a private cost of long nights sacrificed outings and intentional friendships. Or maybe that was your, your, your kin saying, no, you can't be friends with that, that knucklehead, right? Some of you dealt with peers saying you were acting funny or talking white because of your academic aspirations. There might've been classes that you were in where you were the only black honors kid. This year, you had to navigate a whole pandemic and you tried your best, I know you did, to seem really engaged and excited about all of those same getting to know you Zoom activities that all of your teachers did. I know. <laughs> teachers, I work with middle schoolers. I get it. It's hard. It's so hard. You had assignments that brought you to tears. Assignments you put off because you were watching too much TikTok. Projects you worked on where classmates didn't do nothing at all. Projects where classmates were doing the absolute moment and most. And to this day, some of us have projects we had to work on that we still don't know why we had to do that project. Family wasn't totally okay all the time, but you dug deep. The money was not always right. Maybe the money wasn't even there, but still you dug deep. Some days it might've felt like you were defending the entire race and it wasn't fair. Some of you have paid the cost of curricular invisibility, seeing more of yourselves in the books that your kin bought you than you do in your own classrooms. And yet you have the audacity the, to imagine, to dream, to accomplish, to breathe. When this world has exhaustively stolen the breath of so many of our brothers and sisters, we need you to know that you're breathing is enough for us and it always will be. And on top of all of that, you still have expectation and you still have the resolve to be what our people have always been, resilient. You paid a heavy cost for tonight and we are so proud of you, but you were not the only one that paid a cost for a moment like this. You see, this is about you, but it's also a communal moment. Gwendolyn Brooks said it best. We are each other's harvest. We are each other's magnitude and bond. There was a cost for tonight. Nights like this always evoke black joy and black cost. History made and history making. We can't do this thing tonight without remembering the cost of black soldiers in the Civil War who paid with their lives, but whose families still at home would pay a price too. Whether their bodies were on the battlefield or the rattled porch of a plantation, choices we won't ever fully feel that they made, they paid a cost. There was a cost paid by black boys and girls they would look over the shoulder of the master's children while playing, catching glimpses of letters and hyphenations, and trusting that their intellectual capacity wasn't a hallucination. They would hide that alphabet under their tongue and under their bed, rehearsing and tracing, teaching themselves to read and to write. The cost for tonight was enslaved Africans stealing an education for themselves. Septima Clark citizenship schools and the freedom schools of the 1960s that took places on porches, churches, homes, and under trees where black children, parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles would learn beyond the skills of sharecropping. Fannie Lou Hamer 
pay the cost for tonight. I don't know if y'all know who she is, but she's one of my favorites with no tangible experience of freedom. Her parents had been enslaved. She had been a sharecropper herself. She had a glimpse of what would be possible through the power of political involvement as a fully recognized citizen. I don't have enough time to break down this black woman's life, but you need to know that she led black people in her town in Mississippi to vote some 26 miles away. And when she returned home, not only was she fired from her job, but she was beaten in a jail cell. And then they had black inmates, they forced them to beat her as well. And she would go on to lead the formation of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party and testify on national TV just how deep and how visceral and how bad it was in Mississippi. In response to the people who said, change takes time, she would tell the world that I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and we wanna change. That change being the right to vote. That change being the right to at least a decent education. I, I think a lot about Fannie Lou Hamer. I think about her because I was 30 when I learned about her. I was sitting in a, a doctoral class and it was my first time ever learning the full extent of this woman. You hear the quote, you hear the phrase, but you, you don't fully grasp. And I was, I was too silly to even investigate further beyond what I had heard in passing. And I remember me and a few other black students in class just started sobbing in class. Like, why, why didn't we know about this here? Why don't we know about this woman? I think about her a lot and I'm proud. I think about her and I probably feel some things that you're feeling on the inside of you right now. And when I think about her, I cannot stop asking, how was she so hungry for something that she had never tasted? You think about that? She intimately knew fields and fists and fire, but she still had a fervor for a future that she would never truly behold. How? I asked the same of Dr. Martin Luther King, who in his last years and last speech, he seemed to know that the end of his life was near, that his body wouldn't physically see what it had laid itself down for. How did they pay that cost? the way that so many of them did. I have to believe that in some way they saw you. I have to believe that the cost they paid was because they knew that oil wells would be their inheritance. You are the inheritance of our ancestors. I can't see you and it's driving me crazy because I love seeing your beautiful smiles. But I imagine that you look like 1861 when our people left plantations and the first thing we wanted to do was get to the Northern soldiers and get a school with not even a bag to hold our trauma. We wanted a book without a blueprint for what was next. We demanded the right to use our brain. We are resilient. Y'all remind me of Elijah Mars, who after fighting in the Civil War used his earnings and he built schools with 20 other black soldiers. They would build entire towns and several schoolhouses to accommodate the mass of formerly enslaved people that wanted to learn because we have always, we have always wanted to know. We have always wanted to exhaust the full capacity of who we knew that we were. And when white men would drag their schoolhouse and the teacher set a blaze into a river, they would build again, because we're resilient. To all the kin and teachers and members of the village in this room who have had the hard talks, the prayer sessions, who have woken up at midnight and laid oil on your child's head, the teacher conferences, the meetings advocating for students, knowing that they will never know what happens in the meetings where we are advocating for them. You remind me of my mom, 
who after hearing that I was about to get kicked out of school, because pause, your girl was not always what you see before you now, right? Don't get familiar, right? So when I was about to get kicked out of school because my GPA had plummeted and I lost my scholarship, do you know that my mother flew out to the University of Pittsburgh the very next day, unbeknownst to me, she made me a schedule to meet with the vice chancellor and somehow, to this day I don't know, somehow convinced that woman to get me back in that school because in her words, you are not coming back here until you are done. Can we just give it up for Black women? (laughs) Can we give it up for women, period? We are resilient. It is who we will forever be. We can't can't even help it. One of my favorite Black heroes is Maya Angelou, a poet and author. In her poem, Still I Rise, she wrote, Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Can you imagine that for a second? Walking like you have oil wells in your living room. That's a lot of money y'all. It's gonna change the way that you walk. It it changes the way you think. It changes the type of food that you eat. It changes the type of people that you affiliate with. It changes how you speak. It changes everything to have an oil well in your room. Now imagine with me that you are the oil well. It hits different when you realize you don't just own something of value, but that you are the value in the room. Resilient, valuable, a private builder and a public wonder you are. Nobody in this room believes that you could ever be anything less. Congratulations to our scholars. Congratulations to your kin and to your support network that helped you get here. Well done, thank you. Good evening, I'm Beverly Britton, the assistant principal of Sunnydale School. Harriet Tubman once said, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to change the world. This evening, we have among us future biochemists, entrepreneurs, engineers, scientists, and physicians who will become our future change agents in the world. These exemplary students have demonstrated resilience and fortitude as they've maintained grade point averages of 3.5 and higher. It is with great honor and enthusiasm that I present to you some of you School District U46's exemplary senior scholars.
Wow. Wow. Is all I can say. Oh my gosh. I have chills, you guys. Okay. But let me, let me try to get on script. That was amazing. I'm so full right now. Um, before I get into anything, I have to have do acknowledgements. Um, my name is Keisha Williams. I am a social worker in the district. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the ancestors on whose shoulders we all stand. From kings and queens to abolitionists to sharecroppers, and in particular, Bob Gilliam, Ron O'Neill, and Ron Raglan, all former African-American administrators who have paved the way in many ways. We acknowledge their dedication, their resilience and commitment to our youth. And so I say, Ashe. Now with that, I'd like to ask all the seniors and all the committee members to turn on your cameras and take a bow this has been quite an amazing night. We know that you guys want to see those seniors that, that we just saw their um, beautiful um, descriptions and bios on the screen. So we want to go ahead and switch over to our, our uh, gallery view, and we want to give a hand to our seniors. Seniors, let's turn on those videos. Let's give you a hand. We're here for you today. And our sixth graders and eighth graders who are watching in the crowd, we're all giving you a hand. We were cheering, we were dancing, we were excited. We were excited. So in a minute, we're gonna come back around. I'm gonna finish doing some closing remarks and what have you, and then we're gonna come back. And Because what's an event without taking pictures, right? We're in, I know we're in a virtual space, but we're still gonna get those pictures in as soon as we get over to um, our gallery view. But I'd like to share with you how this all came about. Um, who you see on the camera with the black screens or perhaps a yellow screen um, is a group of African-American educators whose goal has been to expand the narrative of African-American youth to include highlighting the achievements of those who are excelling in our district. As the district continues to implement the equity plan and other efforts, we hope to grow these efforts as well. This year, we are excited because we expanded to include student voice in the planning process, and we couldn't be prouder for them for showing up. This year, what's new is that we included our sixth and eighth graders, figuring that we would include more students so that they have something to look forward to, and those were all the transition grades. And then we heard, when we heard from the African American Student Forum, the committee were so proud, we were so beaming with joy and so excited that we thought what better thing to do than to lift them up to. So that is why we expanded our reach and, and that is what you have today. So with that being said, I wanna thank everyone who helped behind the scenes, Melanie Vargas, the superintendent's office, Dr. Johnson, Dr. Lance, the communication team, all of the committee members, all of the students, and last, but certainly not least, to the parents, our hats go off to you as well. It takes a village. Brittany Barber, oh my goodness. If there was a mic to drop, you dropped it. You brought the word today. I am so full. Thank you for such a wonderful message for us to close out on. And so if everybody has their, um, is everybody on the screen? Are we in the gallery view? Are we in the gallery view so that all of our all of our seniors, we can take a moment to, to screenshot. Um, Ms. Carla, do you have us in the gallery view? Can we get in the gallery view, please, so that everybody, all of the seniors will be able to show up and um, we can get a screenshot picture of especially our seniors. And I'm not sure if we, if everybody, are they all on? I don't see everybody. And so, yes, if we could have our administrators that are on, that are panelists, our superintendent, our deputy superintendent. Um, I'm not sure if there are other administrators, the committee members, all that are on. We are so proud of the seniors. Yes. So we're going to just give a minute because I 
on my screen, it looks like you have to kind of scroll through. So I want to give you a chance to scroll through to your, your kiddo and, and get that screenshot. <laughs> yes, we know if we were together, everybody would be, this would be that time where we would all be just taking pictures and, and everybody would run to whomever it is they wanted to take pictures with. So we want to give you a chance to do that as well. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and move us along here. Hopefully everybody got their pictures. I know that we, we wish that you guys could just be, we know you're clapping. We know you're stumping and jumping for our seniors, because it's exciting. And after, after Miss Barbara brought that word, we know everybody's excited. So with that being said, I'm gonna share my screen again. So here, um, I have some announcements to make. We have a video that we recorded at the beginning of the month with a group of our seniors that are before you. Um, we had a group of HBCU college students. We had college HBCU alums that were present, that's historically black colleges and university that were present on a panel with Ms. Barber as our host. And we had the seniors on the panel. We had the eighth graders in the audience and they did a dynamic, wonderful job talking about black excellence in academia. And we're excited to announce that that recording will be available tomorrow. If you go to the district's website, that recording will be on the district's YouTube channel. And you can check out what our students had to say as well as some HBCU college students and alums. I put here a bunch of, um, a couple of district um, resources that are available to you. I put the African American Advisory Council. You heard from Mrs. Sepp. She is over that council. These are the upcoming dates. We have the African American Parent Leadership Institute. Our very own Carla Jimenez is over that, as well as the Hispanic um, Parent, His Parent Leadership Institute that's available as well. There's a lot of resources. There are a lot of space. There are several spaces that are Black spaces for African American Black students and staff that the district has um, available for us. So we just want to make sure that everybody is aware. So without that, without further ado, I want to thank you all for being here with us tonight. We appreciate you. We love you. This is the committee, and we thank you. And you have a wonderful night. to our seniors.